Yolanda Tusing. This will not only be a conversation, but we also have a surprise at the end and a few other surprises that she brought with her. Okay, so we'll talk about all of that in a second. It's yeah. unfortunate. Yolanda Tusing is a two-time Academy Award winning hairstylist. Her first win for makeup was for the film Miss Doubtfire, 1993, and, and at the 66th Oscar Awards. Her second was for Edward Scissor, uh, for, sorry, for Ed Wood in 1994, and the 67th Academy Award. She's also known for her work on Beetlejuice in 19, 1988, Edward Scissorhands in 1990, Batman Returns in 1992, Matilda, 1996, and Jumanji, the next, uh, the next level, 2019, among many others. Tusing's highly acclaimed career of over 40 years includes her work as hair department head, hairstylist, key hairstylist, hair supervisor, and hair designer. Please give a warm round of applause to our dear guest and friend. <laughs> A lot to share there, but I'm really glad you're here. What a beautiful attendance and a lovely crowd. Um, we're here to celebrate Yolanda and her achievements. It can you, I want to kind of step way back, kind of like to the beginning, because transformation, you know, it's an important part of people's memories when they see these transformations on the screen. And was this always your goal? Where did it start? Where was the beginning for you in this career path? The beginning, um, I started as a little girl just loving to comb my grandmother's hair. Yes. I would sit on the back of the couch and it, it relaxed her, so I played with her hair. I thought I was good, I really wasn't yet, but it was fun <laughs> playing with grandma's hair. Um, and as I went through school, I realized that school was really hard for me. It was hard for me to graduate because I did have issues with learning, and one of my teachers said to me, um, you should not go into secretarial work. I graduated a long time ago, so all they offered women was secretarial work or beauty school, and I remembered loving to comb my grandmother's hair, so I chose beauty school, and uh, that was the beginning of becoming the hairdresser, and then I went into a salon and worked, um, as I worked in the salon, my family, my, the men in my family, my uncle, uh, Raymond Garcia, was the first relative to come into the studios. He came in as a teamster, and he brought my father and my father's brothers, and soon I had a group of uh, family members working at Universal Studios. That got me an interview there, and um, uh, they hired me, put me into the wing room. That's how I got in. <laughs> now, we, it's such a treat to have you here because we have some of your work in our galleries, in our identity gallery. But you're a celebrated um, artist in the industry, and it's well known and recognized because you brought your two boys with you today. I did. <laughs> Your two boys are a year apart. They are. Yes. So what did it feel at that 66, 66th Oscar for that first win with Miss Empire? It was, um, it was hard to believe to start with. It was like, uh, it was surreal in the sense that I was there and then all of a sudden I was on stage receiving an Oscar. Um, it was exciting. It was, uh, an honor. Uh, the Academy had acknowledged me as the first hairdresser, and to win it that first year that we were allowed to be there was, um, it was just an honor. And, and it took me a while, it took me a while to believe they were mine, that I kept them in my brother's house at the beginning. I was afraid to have them in my house, and he cared for them for three years. He actually dressed him up during Christmas, which I've continued to do that uh, since. Uh, the boys have a Santa Claus hat, a scarf. Um, my brother made it for them. He's also a teamster. 
you wouldn't think that the Teamster knew how to sew. <laughs> so, the, so the 67th Oscar comes around. Yes. And you, you and Tom Hanks have something in common with the 67th Oscar, right? We do. Um, the year before, he won an Oscar, the same year I did, and the second year, we were both nominated again, and he won again, and so did I. Ah. So um, it was something to feel pretty special about that they were back to back, and uh, Tom had his too. We, uh, V. Neal and I, the makeup artists, we were nominated. We spoke to him about that, and there was, uh, V. Neal and I both worked on Pee Wee's Playhouse where Lawrence Fitch Fishbeck was also now nominated the 67. Did I say it wrong? It's Fishburne. Fishburne, I'm sorry. It's Fishburne. Yeah. And um, we met him there and called him by his character name. He was wanting to be a little more elevated than we called him. Um, all right, I, uh, I can't remember his name. I don't know what his name is. I missed it at the yeah. moment, but it'll come back to me. Cowboy Curtis, that's Cowboy it, Cowboy Curtis. Curtis. How did you get that? So we met him at the bar at the luncheon, and we said, Cowboy Curtis, we're all here together, because the three of us worked together. And he looked at us, he accepted it. <laughs> he accepted Cowboy Curtis. That's amazing. You mentioned Lee Neal, and there's also someone else, Great, uh, Great Ken. Canham. Ken Canham. So it's a unique pairing, the three, or, Groupie, the three of you had a, a won that first time. I think you won the second time. B. Neil was part of that yes. as well. I, I guess I want to ask because you you mentioned something really important that the sixty six Oscars was the first time your your profession, your category of makeup and hairstyling was included. It wasn't part of the the award ceremony before. What does that feel like, and what does that mean to your? colleagues in that industry, your fellow nominees, your fellow collaborators, how did that feel and what what, what kind of conversations were, were had after that? Yes, um, well, it, it, again, such an honor to be included, to, to be part of any Academy event. And we were actually, for a few years before that, the hairdressers in the Academy, they were trying to petition to get us an uh, award position because it didn't exist. You could be nominated as a makeup artist, but not as a hairdresser. So when we finally got that, um, actually the committee, I wasn't on, in that category yet, they submitted Edward Scissorhands to be considered as a special Oscar. The Academy uh, didn't accept that. Uh, they accepted me as a member then, but we continued to, you know, ask for that category. And the 66 Oscars was, they allowed us to be part of it, and we were part with MEGA. But now we are still in that same category, but we can be all by ourselves if they decide, oh, hairdress, this movie is excellent hairdressing, but maybe we don't want makeup. It started as to be with them, and now we are uh, I, able to be nominated just as hair, which was quite an achievement. And we do talk about that, and some of my colleagues thank me for, for opening the door. Um, the, so what, one of the, the hair pieces from from that film, uh, Rosa Chance is upstairs in our identity gallery. It is. Yeah, so that's being celebrated there. You also, and she is. yes, you know, <laughs> folks can see her on the screen. Um, but you also brought another wig or hairpiece, right? Yes. And you want to tell people who that is? This is Danny DeVito. Danny you DeVito. would have recognized him without me telling you, but this is from the movie uh, Matilda. Uh, it's actually from the, the, he was the penguin in in uh, Batman Returns, and he had to have appliances made. So he, we did a face cast. He had his face cast. They used his this head to make his appliances. And why that was great for me was I had his real head to work on, so, which is 
special as a hairdresser. You work from a canvas block, you put plastic on it, you build it up to give you the right shape, but I had the right head. And also benefited the wig maker. So, um, and then I continued to work with Danny for several films, and that also allowed me to um, continue to make his wigs and hair pieces from his actual head, which is the perfect fit you can get. Um, so yeah, that was special. Um, going back to B and Gray, because I, 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 I guess I teased this, but I didn't go into detail on the question, but you get to collab, I mean, you have a colleague that you've worked for many years yes. with here, these are folks that you've worked with, and so how, how, does that how does that happen where you get this chemistry, or you, you're all called independently, or you're a team and you end up working together and kind of rely, how do, how do those groupings happen so that you end up well, on a project quite often? For the project that we won our Oscar for, which is Mrs. Doubtfire, we were already a team, we are all members of Local 706, and uh, Lee and I met on uh, Under the Rainbow, the movie, the second one, that's still like 30 years old now. But um, we were working, we had lots of background to do, we were both really uh, enjoyed doing that character work. It was characters that we were doing for that movie, and uh, we worked, we met there, we worked well together, and. From that movie, we started choosing to work with each other, which is what you get to do uh, in the film industry. Uh, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're picked separately, um, but you always hope that you get to be part of the team. So V and I, and then there was Greg, who ha also had worked with V, and that put the three of us together. Um, it's, it's a nice working relationship. Uh, that you, you meet along the way. You work with people and you work well with them and you want it always to be that way. In, but in, in the process of filmmaking, makeup and hairstylists, you're like the first people on set. You're there before the sun rises. And so who's, who's there at the start and, and, and what is that like? What is, walk us through a day of what that work is like. Okay, well the only people that are there before us are the Teamsters because they have to open, they have to park our makeup trailer and open it. So we do have a lot of uh, gratitude to them that they're there that early with us. And they'll sometimes bring us coffee, which is, oh yay, because craft service hasn't even showed up yet. The caterers haven't showed up yet. They're there, but they're preparing. And some, you know, our, our day might start the night before with um, prepping the wigs or, or the, the appliances or the makeup that we're using the next day. So we would always ask for, give us a half hour lead on the actors because we have to prep all that, pull our stuff out. Then we had electric rollers to use. So we had to be there early enough to get the electric rollers hot. And, and it's always a dance between makeup and hair. Um, uh, oftentimes you do do it together, and, and that's hard too because you know they're standing in front, you're in the back, they want to get to the other side, you got to get out of their way, and they do the same thing for you. So we get everybody ready, the crew shows up, we do a rehearsal, we think, oh gee, the rest of the day is going to be easy, our work is done. It is not done. Uh, then we spend the rest of the day making sure that they look the same, uh, and you know, you think about it, it's not easy for an actor to not touch themselves. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. They, you know, they want to touch their face, they want to move their hair back, and as you're looking at them all day, making sure that nothing has moved out of place because maybe only seconds have gone by in the movie, you know? You might be doing something for two weeks and it's only six minutes in the movie, that six minutes is actually a long time. So um, that's what we do. We get them ready, we stand by them all day long, we touch them all day long. Then comes wrap, everybody goes home, makeup and hair, they're taking their makeup off, I'm removing their wig, they leave, and then we gotta prep everything for tomorrow. That wig might need to be washed, it, it definitely has to be reblocked. That's 
they have lace on the front of them, so we glue that lace down so you actually don't see the edge of the wig. And that is done every night. So the, some of the first people to arrive and, and the, the last, last to leave. leave. Yeah. We had a hairdresser come from a salon as a request one day. Uh, she came and colored the actress that she always did, and she said, well, I'm gonna stay with you uh, all day. And I said, okay, and then she did. We were on vacation, so it was hard for her to leave uh, the set, because we would be taken back to hotels. Uh, she said, wait a minute, at the end of she goes, you're the first ones in and the last ones to leave. I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> About uh, about the work, where does um, about the work, where does um, the inspiration start? Because you you probably you know you yeah, connect yeah. with. The, you want to come have a seat up front? Okay. Kenny is everyone welcome. Woo. <laughs> um, uh, we you you often you often what was the next? trying to retrace my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's 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 all right. It's all right. Uh, the the inspiration for the work because it, it is a long day and a lot of planning. But before all that, are you given like a drawing? I mean, here you had Danny DeVito's head to work with, which is great. But you don't always get people's heads, right? So no, are you given a rendering and and or is it written word and then you have to design something off of that? Yes, it's yes to all of those questions. We start with a script, and that they'll give us when, as soon as we're hired. Hopefully it's a couple of months before the movie. Sometimes it's as little as two weeks, but we read that script, and we highlight everything in there that will make a difference to your job. Well, they just got out of the swimming pool. Oh, no, their hair's going to be wet. You know, there might be several takes. Um, and uh, so you, you read your script, you make your own notes. With Tim Burton, you always got pictures. He hand drew them for you at the last minute, which is the most amazing thing of all. Um, and, and then you start taking meetings. You have to, we have to be really crafty at listening to an actor's opinion of what their character looks like and then listening to what the director thinks they should look like. And oftentimes it doesn't meet. So um, you're in the middle trying to make those things meet, but with your, you know, with the exception of Tim Burton, who draws a picture for every actor, and I've done three or four movies with Tim, and not one actor has ever been able to change his idea which says a lot for him, you know, and his characters. Every character he has made is, is lovable and is still lovable, so I think the actors were willing to say, okay, Tim, I'll, I'm, I'm all yours, and that doesn't happen very often. What we want to do as makeup and hair people is uh, we want to bring our art to the character, so we're trying to be part of creating the character that has been written on the page or the drawing that you're trying to bring alive and um, and that's where our passion comes in and I get to help visually make this character. It's, it's an incredible experience to be able to be involved in all of that right from the beginning drawing to the end. Um, it's a great feeling. There you, you've been involved in so many films. Where can you tell us where that where there's been that, that mentor experience that you might have gotten? Someone that's like guided you or mentored you or helped advance your career, giving you some sort of like edge or piece of wisdom or knowledge that helped you grow. There's a few people I have to say were um, responsible for that. I. Uh, when I was hired into the Universal Makeup and Hair Department, the department head hired me uh, basically because we went to school in the same neighborhood or near each other. Uh, her name was Florence Avery, and she was, at that time, this is 1977, she was department heading that department, but she was Debbie Reynolds' hairdresser 
for a long time, and um, that made her very special, and that made her special to me. Uh, in my experience there, I have to say and thank uh, Josephine Turner. She was a wig maker who worked for Max Factor, and uh, she made all of the old uh, films prior to the, the 60s, maybe the 40s, 30s, I didn't research those years, but uh, she was in Max Factors on, I think it's Fairfax, or it's right off of Hollywood. Anyways, uh, she was the wig maker and she taught me a lot. And then there is Gail Ryan, who at that time we had to test to be in the makeup and hair department. And Gail Ryan, who is still teaching and still working, uh, taught me, she prepped me for my test and you had to work 120 days in film and take a test. So those people gave me an edge that I didn't think that it ended because there was no more departments, there was no more training, there was no more apprenticeships. And also, my experience with Tim Burton gave me, he was my muse, I guess, and he, um, doing his drawings and handing you a drawing, you would look at this, this is a flat piece of paper, and I have to make it in a form that you can walk all the way around and still recognize from that drawing. And I've never worked harder for any director than I did for Tim because he pushed me harder and it gave me the ability to, um, I brought craft into, you know, in my makeup trailer, there's always been a uh, toolbox a hot glue gun, a screwdriver, a hair pliers, wire. I learned that from putting Tim's drawings together. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to create uh, Edward Scissorhands' hair on Johnny Depp. He had short hair and it had to look like it had been cut several times. So I pulled out a glue gun and Johnny, thank God, was willing to do anything. And I don't 